have you ever heard the term reverse luring and wondered what that's all about? Or maybe this is even the first time you've ever heard those words. My name is Vicky Miles and today I'm going to tell you how and why I use reverse luring in dog training. But before we begin, let me know if you've ever used any version of reverse luring by leaving a comment in the comment section below. In this video I'm going to tell you about some of the different ways that I use reverse luring in obedience training and in fitness training. Now there are several ways to train reverse luring. You might have seen different versions to the one I'm going to show you today and that is fine. There's no way that is the right way or the wrong way. They're just different ways of doing the same thing. Reverse luring is an impulse control exercise. So what you're basically using is the dog's uh, ability to control its impulse to do something that it wants to do. So there's several ways that we can go about using this and I'm going to show you some of those now. We start by teaching our dog not to take food out of our hand by using impulse control instead of simply forbidding our dog from taking the treat. In reverse luring, the dog chooses to control his impulse to take the treat as opposed to just being corrected if he takes it. Impulse control is a finite resource in both our dogs and in ourselves. That means that uh, we run out of impulse control. Now when we run out of impulse control, that's when we do things like uh, answer a comment on Facebook instead of just scrolling past or uh, snapping at someone when we get irritated, when we can't really control the urge to do something that we know we shouldn't do. And it's the same for dogs. When dogs are tired, stressed, uh, or they've used up all of their impulse control, they will start acting on their impulses. So when we train impulse control, it's important to know that it's a finite resource. We need to take a break from the training and let the dog refill its impulse control ability before we carry on the training. We can use this impulse control to teach the dog duration of holding a position, for instance sit down or stand, but in addition to this we can also teach the dog duration in holding an object, holding position in a heel, uh, or not barking or just focusing on us rather than everything else that is happening around us. In fitness training, duration in a stand is really useful and it's one of the first things I teach a dog to do. I have that as a foundation skill for most of my fitness training courses. The ability to hold a stand for a longer period of time and reverse luring is an excellent way of actually getting this stand. We can also use it to get the dog to actually change positions. So we use the reverse luring to get the dog to keep the position and then we also use it to get the dog to change its position. So to summarise, reverse luring is an exercise we can use when we want to teach our dog to hold a position, either a sit or a stand or a down. And we can use these positions in our obedience training, we can use the stand in uh, dog shows or in our fitness training and then we can also use this reverse luring to teach the dog to hold an object for longer in its mouth or to not bark, to stay focused on us or to keep a position in for instance heel work. If you want to learn more about canine fitness and foundation training hit the subscribe button and that little bell icon next to it and that will give you notifications every time I release a new video. I release videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays and if there's a specific topic that you want me to do a video about just let me know in that comment section below.